Well, as already said, we are honouring women on Mother's Day today. So if you're on, on online today, we honour you wherever you are. Our prayer is that you leave the gathering or leave the online gathering feeling honoured, feeling blessed. Every person feeling honoured and blessed. We're going to hear from a couple of ladies this morning. And we've asked these ladies to give honour to, we've left it open really for them to give honour to their mum, grandmum, spiritual mums. Uh, if you're a spiritual mum here today, I want to honour honor you and create amazing spiritual mums and dads for that matter. We honour you. But anyway, we've asked a couple of ladies to come and share and give honour. So first of all, I'd like you to give it up for Rachel Moitara, an amazing spiritual mum here in the house. Yeah. I honour you, Rachel. Rachel is my spiritual mum, one of my spiritual mums. Yeah. Did you know that Rachel was my youth group leader? <laughs> okay, no stories, okay? No. <laughs> She, I know that she's a number of uh, women here, a spiritual mum, a mentor to many. So we honour you, Rachel. Thank you for who you are. Yeah, give it up for this amazing lady. Oh, I just might have to read this. <laughs> um, yeah, excuse me if I do get emotional because, yeah, that was lovely. Thank you. And I won't um, tell any stories about Jan. Um, Maybe for a fee. <laughs> um, uh, I just, before I start, I want to, um, I'm acutely aware that there are some people here whose mothers aren't here. They're not walking this earthly life. And I um, want to honour you that um, they've done a good job. Um, yeah. Uh, God is beautiful in you. Um, uh, my mother uh, was born Mavis Elaine Horn in Elstow, which is not far from Te Aroha, uh, nearly 91 years ago. Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Um, she, um, she drives her own car, and very well, I might say. Um, she does her own shopping. Uh, uses her cell phone, cleans, cooks and bakes her chocolate chippy biscuits and apple shortcake are treasured in our family. Um, nearly 10 years ago, mum uh, had major surgery for cancer, uh, resulting in many co uh, complications. Um, she now has a permanent colostomy bag and she copes really well. She's very persevering and very stubborn. Um, she grew up on a farm and attended Eastport Road Methodist Church. She went to youth group or, or Bible classes, it was called in those days, and Easter camps. Yes, they still had them in those days. And um, there she met my dad, who was also from Te Aroha. Um, he was a farmer. And um, yay, he was a farmer because she wanted to be a farmer's wife. Um, they became engaged, um, but then Dad got a very strong call to enter the ministry, and that set my mum into turmoil because she didn't want to be a minister's wife. She didn't want to be in the limelight or in front of people and leading groups and, um, you know, having everybody look at your family and judge you, which often happens. Um, she wanted to be a farmer's wife. But um, God spoke to her as well. Um, uh, she read uh, the words in Ruth, where you go, I will go. Um, where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. And luckily for us, or fortunately for us, she married Dad. And um, they served... Um, together for many, many years in, um, in church. 
And uh, um, I'll just have to yeah, get back to my notes. Um, Mum only ever wanted to serve in the background and um, she ended up serving at the front. <laughs> and um, um, the things that, that I love about Mum is that she, um, she had such, such a servant heart and she's humble and, and her faithfulness to God and to my dad and to us as a family. Um, uh, as a wife and mother, she made sacrifices, um, whether it was boring stuff like endless loads of laundry. Uh, there were four of us kids, and my grandfather lived with us as well, uh, going without herself so that we could have the necessary um, things that we needed, uh, raising um, me and my siblings, um, my dad, being a minister, uh, would often be away and um, at meetings or visiting people or preparing sermons. Um, you can relate to that, can't you, Jill? <laughs> um, she was always um, putting other people's needs before her own. Um, and that's such a real challenge for us, for all of us, um, uh, putting other people's needs before our own, being sacrificial in our love. And, um, and that is the heart of a, of a servant. That's what, what Jesus did. And, um, and she followed Jesus. Um, she, um, there will never be a, a movie made about my mum's life. Um, and millions of people will not know her name. Um, um, but her selfless acts of love have made a difference in many people's lives. You know, um, um, Jesus, uh, it's quite interesting that, um, thank you team, thank you Ruby, for uh, that song. Uh, I asked my mum what her favourite hymn was, and she said, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know? <laughs> So thank you for that. Um, she has a firm, uh, faithful trust in God. She still reads her Bible every day and prays. She goes to church often, you know, saying, oh, no, I can't come today, dear. I've got to go to church. She'll go to church every day, every Sunday that she can, and only recently has stopped playing the organ. Um, so... Um, she would be really embarrassed if she knew that I was speaking to you about her today. Um, I actually wrote this as a, um, as a devotion for uh, the Christian school last year when we were in lockdown, um, honouring mums. And um, I actually uh, showed it to her a couple of weeks ago and she said, oh, she said, oh you paint me out to be a saint. You know, I didn't like to say to her, Mum, actually, saints are dead. <laughs> because I didn't want to speak there. But um, I would be doing her an injustice if I didn't point back to her strength. And her strength has always been her faith in God. And I, I look at her and I think, man, you know, You've been through heaps, she has. Um, we all do. And yet she's remained faithful. And her strength has come from her relationship with God, her friend. You know, she um, is pretty unconfident in front of people and she, she, she hangs on to that verse, um, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And that's, that's her life. And, um, yeah, um, so I, I really, I want to point it back to God because he is the lover of her soul. He's the strength of her life. And um, she's such an example to me and to my children and her great-grandchildren. She's got great-grandchildren, quite a few. Um, you know, and they all bless her name. You know, they all... Um, 
some of them don't know Jesus, and I know she prays for them. So, um, yeah, thank you, Jan and Sheridan, for the opportunity to share about my mum. I feel really, really (laughs) honoured that I could do that while she's still alive. Um, And I'm pretty sure she's going to be alive for a little bit longer. (laughs) She's pretty stubborn. So, um, (laughs) yeah, thank you. Would you like to just stay here just a little bit longer? Isn't that, wasn't that fantastic? You know, our theme at the moment is back to the future, back to Pentecost in order to go forward. And what a picture there of a, of a wonderful woman uh, who is founded in the Lord. Wonderful. And look who gets, who's carrying it on. <laughs> and um, there's someone else who's carrying it on as well. So with the other lady that we've invited, I'm not sure if you know... It's Ruby, <laughs> Rachel's beautiful daughter. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? A beautiful picture here of the generations. May we, may we all be encouraged to found ourselves in the, the Lord. <laughs> like, yeah, be blessed. Yes, you can go. You can go and grab some tissues, Ruby. <laughs> Ruby here, I want to honour you, Ruby, an incredible young lady who already is an amazing spiritual mum to so many. Ruby is one of our youth leaders, uh, an amazing leader here in our creative team, an incredible woman of God. So we give honour to you, Ruby, this morning. Thank you. Oh, kia ora, church. Hi, mum. Yeah, we managed to keep this a secret for like the whole week and it was like real hard because I just wanted to be like, guess what I'm doing? Um, But yeah, Um, so I have a picture to show of me and my mum. This is my favourite picture of us. It cracks me up every time I look at it. Um, So I am Ruby Elizabeth Moitara. Mum is Rachel Elizabeth Moitara, Rem Rem. So we we share the same middle name. And I I think this picture... Um, really shows the extent to which I want to be like my mum. Um, My mum is a teacher. She went to university at 16. She uh, got into teacher's college. She moved from uh, over near Tauranga and she moved to Hamilton uh, very young. I always go, mum, you were so smart. And she goes, no. And I'm like, you went to school at 16. I don't Oh, I forget how to tie my shoes sometimes, you know? And um, she was brilliant. She's been teaching for a number of years. She started as Miss Trebilco, and then when she got married, she uh, is now Mrs. Moitara, um, and she has impacted so many children's lives. Um, absolutely phenomenal teacher, and I take a lot of my um, inspiration from her. I'm studying teaching too, following in her footsteps. Um, I've had many influences in my life. Many spiritual mums, but none as great as my mum. Um, I was at an event a little while ago, um, just talking with some ladies, and I realised the extent to which my mum has been a spiritual mum to others. Um, She's been a youth leader, a mentor, a young adults leader. She has walked with so many women who are now mothers themselves. Um, And I just think that's so wonderful that she... She delights in the Lord so much and wants to share that. Um, One thing that she taught us growing up was, do you want to be right or do you want to be kind? Um, And as the oldest, I was like, but I am right. (laughs) Like, that's the thing. And that has become something that I've held on to growing up is, do you want to be right or do you want to be kind? If given the choice, be kind. Um, And I really hold that Uh, very closely, and she taught us the power that your words have, you know, um, that verse that says there is life and death in the tongue, and so she was always very particular to speak words of life over us kids, Um, speaking scripture, she'd have chalkboards and um, little laminated pieces of paper around the house with Bible verses, and um, she was always sharing what she was reading. Um, Mum has held me when I have cried, and um, as someone that feels things very deeply, that is a lot. Um, she never missed a dance show, even when it was on mum and dad's anniversary. (laughs) Sorry, mum and dad. (laughs) 
Um, she was at every single, when I went to primary school, she went to every single school camp and she cooked and she served. She was at every prize giving and she knew all of my friends' names and their history and their background and she is and um, was still invested in my friends and prays for you guys continually. Um, my mum has served in oh, every aspect of the church. She's served in kids, music, host, um, and she loves to serve like, um, like no one I've ever seen. And so the way I would describe mum, I often talk about this with dad, is she is incredibly servant-hearted. Um, you know, a mother's, a mother's heart. And so she serves because she loves Jesus and she loves people. Um, and it is an incredible, incredible example. Um, she talks about my nanma, and I can total or every single word that she said, my nanma is stubborn. <laughs> We're like, we'll come over. And she's, no, I'll drive. Um, and mum talks about her faithfulness and her prayerfulness. And there is an incredible papa. You see my nana and my mum, and they are so similar. You are so like nanma. And you are so, you have her faithfulness and you have her prayerfulness. Um, and mum has been our rock for our family. She has interceded. She has uh, stepped in the gap, not just for us as a family, but for so many. But um, I wouldn't be who I am without my mum. Um, I know dad wouldn't be who he is without mum, my brother's. Mum does the jobs no one else wants to do. Uh, isn't that, you know, poor mums. I'm really sorry. On behalf of kids everywhere, we're really sorry. Um, but mum, because of how she loves Jesus, she walks it. She walks the talk. And so um, I just want to honour you, mum. And I thank you for continually saying yes to God. I thank you for your love, not just for us, but for people and for the church, and um, I just love serving with you, so I love you, Mum. Wow, Rachel, you set the bar high. <laughs> That's awesome. That was great, eh? Fantastic. Well, I get to honour my mum this morning. She's here. I don't know where you are, mum, but there you are down there. Fantastic. Happy Mother's Day. It's lovely. It's great to have a great mum. Really is. And uh, Margot, I don't know if she's still here. I got to honour her before. But this morning, I really would like us, as a church, to honour Jan, because she's like the mum of the house. She, and she'd never ask us to. So can you give her a hand? She's like the spiritual mum, the mum of the house. She's amazing. She's consistent day in, day out. She is amazing. She's hating this, which is why we should do it. Hey, and we want to honour every person. I, I pray that when you leave this morning, you feel honoured. That's what I pray. And particularly if you're a woman. Oh, well, that's woman. But to all the women. Is that how you, Yeah, it's all right. English can be a challenge some days. And um, that's why God invented tongues, so he could understand me. <laughs> and, um, but particularly all the women, we, we really want you to feel honoured doesn't matter what stage or age of life you're at, you're amazing. You're loved by God. I pray you feel loved by those around you as well. And you know, Numbers uh, has a promise in there, which I think is amazing. And uh, I, was, I was reading the promise and I was trying to think, which value does it tie in? I decided it ties into all of them. But this is it says this in Numbers chapter 6. It says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with this special saying. We know that this is for us as well. May the Lord bless you and protect you. I speak it over you this morning. 
May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show his favor and give you peace. And it carries on. And it says, whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in, his, in my name, he says, I will bless them. So as I bless you this morning in the name of the Lord, I believe that he is blessing you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you peace. Wherever you are this morning, online, God's not restricted by time and space. So this is for you. Take hold of it. I love the word bless. It means uh, divinely to divine speech that bestows or puts on success or prosperity. So when God blesses you, he's putting on success and on prosperity. Now, those things may not necessarily look quite like we think in a kingdom context, but nonetheless, he's putting them on you. So as I bless you, that's what he's putting on you because it's also the vocalization and the, uh, of a person wanting God to do that to you. It's amazing. So I believe that one of the most powerful things we can do for one another is bless one another. Now, when you came in, if you're one of the, the women and you came in today, you got some chocolates and bits and pieces for Mother's Day. That's lovely. But for me to bless you, now that is a rich gift. That, that's actually something really significant that carries the weight of heaven. And I want you to feel that this morning. I want you to feel the smile of God on you. And that when he says, I smile on you, that's what he says. He smiles on you. Words create the environment we live in. The words, as even Ruby said, the words are so powerful. So to vocalize to God that he would give success and prosperity over another is an amazing thing. And I pray you receive it this morning. Part of honoring is to bless. And today we want to honor each one. I love it. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, which is echoing Exodus, says, Honor your mother and father. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your mother and father, things will go well for you. And you will live a long life on earth. It doesn't mean your parents get everything right, eh? Far from it sometimes. Had some clangers over the years. Really. You look back and you cringe a little and go, oh dear. But honor your parents. Which takes humility, doesn't it? It does. Ah, they didn't get it right, all of it. But I'm going to honor them anyway. I'm going to lift them up. I'm going to bless them in Jesus' name. 